G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I'm gonna to be flipping through the next section of my Hobonichi five year techo. This is from 2019 to 2023. She's fully complete and we're up to July. So let's just get right into it. I'm gonna to touch the screen every now and again to make sure that you're in focus so you can see everything. Please feel free to read every single passage of every single day. There's nothing too salacious in there if your curiosity gets the better of you. I save all that stuff for a different journal that never sees the light of day, but uh, I mean, there's some stuff in here that maybe I wouldn't talk about publicly, but that's up to you. Go on that journey if you want to. All I'm saying is don't feel too guilty if you're a little snoopy snoop and you have to <laughs> pause to read. Uh, it's on the internet, I know. So, here's what it is. Here is July 1st. This is the day that I had a life-changing day. So, love that. Lo lovely good start to the video. Uh, I became a dancer again after seven years. Seven years of waiting and on July 1st, 2022, I got an offer to be a part of the Disneyland Parade Department, which I'm still a part of to this day. Love it. And it was for a Christmas fantasy parade. And that was the first uh, show that I came back to do after that extremely long and very disturbing and devastating and depressing hiatus from dancing. So really happy about that. Still very happy to be a part of the Disneyland Parade Department. I've done so much since then that it really doesn't feel like, I, I don't know, I, it's hard to reconcile a lot of what happened prior to this, you know, the years worth of entries that were just very, you know, layered with a lot of feeling and subtext. So I kind of love the perspective that I have uh, reading it back now. But yeah, that was hard before that. I was waiting a waiting very, very long time to go back to dancing. Not even waiting, I was trying my hardest, but that's just the way the cookie crumbled for me. This is the 4th of July photo shoot that Steve and I did uh, a few years ago. Lies. Last year? This was last year? Why does this not feel like last year? Hmm. I, I want to say this was two years ago, but I guess it wasn't. Wow, we've done a lot since last year. Um, this... It was a prior photo shoot we did, very Americana. We called it America Has a Problem. It's a Beyonce thing. Super fun. And then virtual voyage portraits. I think I've talked about those before, but this was the very first one. It's kind of funny to see this one because it's so, like the beginning of us learning how to use studio lighting. <laughs> we went that great. I actually told Steve when we were in the pandemic that, you know, it would be a shame to waste that time not working on his creativity and doing things that he really likes and learning new things. So I gave him a few hundred dollars to join a lighting workshop. Oh, it was like an online course for uh, studio portraiture. And uh, that became the start of his understanding of studio lighting and, you know, kind of venturing into fashion uh, photography. And it was very selfish on my part because I wanted him to become a fashion photographer because I love that. And I wanted him to shoot fashion photos of me. <laughs> I was trying to build my own photographer out of my husband. But look, he already loves photography. And he did have a bit of a passion for fashion photography. He just didn't know it at that point. But now that he's so fully in it, it's kind of funny to revisit these and see the very beginnings of it. And those virtual voyage portraits were a little project I kind of came up with so that he could have a reason to practice what he was learning. And they stuck around. They're still a part of Virtual Voyage to this day. They're one of the most, uh, like, in unimportant parts of the Virtual Voyage workshops. They literally add almost nothing to the experience uh, for the workshop students. <laughs> and they cost some of the most money and it takes some of the most effort to put together. It's really wild. It's like the worst thing you could do in business. But it's a tradition now. It's kind of stuck. So, uh, yeah. Funny to know that's where it all started. This was for Virtual Voyage 4, the Coco theme, Sunrise Spectacular. It was an old self-portrait. Doesn't really bear a, a striking resemblance, but I keep it around. Earthquake, hate that. <laughs> America, did I get that right? Is it blue stars and red stripes? Hang on, I don't have an American flag with me. Uh, I think it's the other way around, right? It's blue stars and red stripes. Sorry, sorry, America. <laughs> got confused. <laughs> this is July 4th, which I think is America's Independence Day. I call it July 4th, so I'm not quite sure. I just call it America Day. We also say um, Savannah, a little niece, Savannah, was born on July 4th <coughs> in COVID. So she's a COVID baby and she's also America's baby. And that's her. And this is why I say, make sure you 
date your pictures, but also name them if there's a baby, because you can just never distinguish between them all. And I hate doing all the deductive reasoning of like, oh, how old was Elijah when Savannah was born? And what year was that? And like, like, just put the name and the date down. You'll save yourself a lot of hassle when you look back on it. Went to go and see the Dapper Dams at Disneyland. I always wear a very subtle look into Disneyland. Can you tell? <laughs> the ears, <laughs> the Mickey sunglasses. That's a Mickey Mouse Tommy Hilfiger shirt too. It's like a whole Mickey look. I love it. This was uh, an earthquake back to back. I do remember this and I didn't have great coping mechanisms around this time. So this was actually kind of sad because I remember specifically these two. This 7.1 was the biggest I'd felt since uh, Japan and the PTSD that I had from from 2011. And so even though I'd made a good progress, I kind of got really agoraphobic. Well, it's not even agoraphobic. I, I think the only place I felt safe was like out in the middle of an open field. And it wasn't so simple to just do that. Like I was, we live on the fourth floor of an apartment building and I never wanted to be in the apartment because I felt like I couldn't get out. So I just wanted to never be at home. So I guess that's the complete opposite of agoraphobia. <laughs> um, but I, I was, I felt like I was also stuck at home just doing my work and everything. So it was just really hard. I, I was really struggling after those concurrent earthquakes. I'm much better now. So that's really nice. The perspective on that has changed, but I do remember being very upset about those. This was Art Snacks, became a collage club piece. A lot of the stuff that you've seen elsewhere that is in this is from collage club typically. And uh, I'll print it on gloss or matte and they're kiss cut from my silhouette portrait machine. And I just painted around it with gouache to kind of layer it all in. And then, <laughs> that's another piece of work from my other journal. Just lay it in there. These are my nieces and nephews, my sister's children. There's that little baby that was in those photos the other <laughs> a few pages back. She's fully grown there. And there's the new baby, Sophia, who she's already had her first birthday. The, the children in these journals really signify how quickly time passes. Of everything else that's in here, I mean, you can get a good look at everything and, you know, see a lot of change happening. You'll see that on my birthday and everything. But it's when you see the babies in here that you really start to see time fly. I'm sure anyone who's a mother or a grandmother or has watched children grow up is, you know, very familiar with that. But that one always trips me out. The cats and Steve. This is a whole blue, a blue entry. I love the aesthetic of this. This is very neat. This is me and my very neat, tiny writing uh, vibes. My Sky Bambi Companion, I got that a few years ago. That's my little mermaid corner pieces stamp set. Uh, these were illustration references for Virtual Voyage 1 when we did the Fathoms Below, the Little Mermaid inspired theme. I put this sticker, it's actually a lot bigger than this, I don't think I have one, but uh, in my Etsy orders I made like this rally stamp style thank you for your order sticker. I used to put little slips in there and you know lots of little things to say thank you for your order, but ever since I changed it to stickers I feel like that's just the best way to do that because then you can use the thank you. Uh, and they're vinyl stickers, and they're really great. I love them. I love how they look. But this was one I printed. Those Kokeshi doll kind of mermaids I did on Mermaid 2024. These are the Alexander Gerard dolls that uh, I was inspired by to do those. We did those in Playtest too, like years ago. So if you, you would have seen them before, they might have been already familiar to you. There's Studio Lemon, a little photo studio that we still have. It's still set up like that, so we must have done a good job with the layout because we haven't really changed anything since then. There's a bit more decoration in there and there's tons more boxes and junk. <laughs> I think I can see only like one or two rolls of paper back there. That whole thing is stacked full now. But yeah, that was 2021. We'll be coming up on to three years, three year anniversary of Studio Lemon this July. More VV4 portraits. That was Toy Story. I really loved Steve's look there. I don't think he liked it that much, but I thought it looked really good. They're like metallic jeans. They really came through in the picture. I love to put a haircut photo in there. I never feel so fresh as when I get a haircut, so I always take a selfie and just feel my oats. This was another one of those first portraits that we did. Again, come a long way. You can see it's much more portraity than it is fashion photography. We're still learning so much. <laughs> we did it with the canvas as well. And a dance class. I enjoyed that class. 
This was one of my first illustrations for stamp sets that I made back in 2017. So before this journal even really existed for me, uh, this was a piece from then. I love bringing some of that old or older stuff back just to remember where it started. Sometimes it throws me back into the, you know, the beginning of it all and gives me a good sense of trying old things again. This is all ephemera from Collage Club. Resting today, burning out. Good for me. That was 2020. I actually didn't take a break in 2020. I know a lot of the world kind of shut down and it was very traumatizing for a lot of people. I didn't have uh, unemployment insurance because I was self-employed since I've come to the country. And so I didn't really have any unemployment to claim when it all went down. So I just had to keep working. And I wasn't ungrateful for that. I was really happy that my line of work became a lot more popular during the pandemic. Like it was a silver lining for me. If, you know, you always got to try and look for them. I mean, you, you can always find how terrible it was. You, know, you don't have to search hard to find that. But yeah, a silver lining was that a lot of people actually had a lot more free time. We're doing a lot more hobbies. We're a lot more online, got a lot more familiar with Zoom. And so a lot of my ability to, uh, you know, sell workshops and this kind of online community just became a little bit easier for me. So that was a bit of a silver lining for my business. And thankfully, because I just don't know what else I would have done at that point. <laughs> so you would have really had to uh, figure it out for the both of us. But it did take a bit of a toll on me. I think mentally I was just kind of already in a bit of a bad place. And then emotionally it was really hard and I just wanted to go home. I wanted to see my family and then you know, I just kept working. I kept working and working and working. And then I started virtual voyages. I started trying to figure all that out. So I did feel pretty, um, like steadily occupied throughout the pandemic, even though it seems to be a really, like a lot of people that I talk to talk about having all this time off and, you know, feeling bored or, you know, I can't even imagine what that would feel like. <laughs> I've always got something to do. I just, I never really get bored, but yeah, I was just talking to Steve about it the other day. And he was just like, that was the last time I kind of felt, you know, like the pace was slow enough to feel on top of everything. And, you know, once life had resumed and everything started resuming again, you start to feel like everything gets a little out of control. For me, it was just kind of life as per usual. So yeah, a bit of a blessing and a curse. I guess I worked a lot, but it was also, you know, good that I could. I like the drawings on this side. I need to remember to do more of that. This was a washi tape that I made from the first Virtual Voyage workshop. All of the ports of inspiration I made washi tapes for and kind of collaged them all together. At first I didn't know they were going to work that well because it's only a 1.5 centimeter washi tape, like 15 millimeters. That's very small. I just wanted to commemorate, you know, the experience. But my washi tape printer took a really high DPI for the file and printed them so well. Like I was very impressed. They were a touch waxier than I wanted them to be, but a good sacrifice for the quality. And uh, yeah, I was really impressed with that. I didn't end up doing that for all the different workshops, but it was a thought that crossed my mind once upon a time. This is old school as well. It was kind of old school, but I had done it years after. It was like me revisiting old school, which I could revisit that again. <laughs> this is all I used to do. This is very my uh, start entry into art journaling, my dilutions. I really started as a little delusions, Gorley. I, I can't lie. I loved my delusions. Then we have her. She's an old piece as well. This was printed on, I think it was glossy sticker paper from Collage Club, but I painted over her with gouache and kind of reinvented her. She very much looks like her original piece, but added on some of the rest and recolored a few things. I wrote here, everything old is new again. It's kind of my favorite way to do art journaling, to be honest, to you know, try lots of things and then try them again year after year and see how they all relate to each other. This was a lesson I did for Art Journaling the Magic that I loved too. And this, there's a lot of really good lessons on here. This, the Dior, uh, Lily of the Valley, Dior bar jacket illustrations I did. That was one of the fashion illustration things I'm like most proud of that I've ever really done because I just felt like it was such a nice idea and I loved the way the illustrations came out. It's such an unvisited part of like, my journaling and I don't even know if I shared a lot about it back when I first did it but I still revisit those illustrations and feel very proud of myself. <laughs> Maybe I, I missed my calling to work as a fashion designer at Dior with my one good idea. I always wonder about that too. I used to want to be a fashion designer but 
it's so competitive and it's so cyclical and it just, it, you, I mean, I don't, how many ideas can you have? You have to have a million ideas and for every season. And I just don't think I'd have that many. Anyway, uh, Art Drilling the Magic Lessons, this was Mary Blair inspired. It was very much taken from one of an, an illustration she did. I just translated it as Alice from Alice in Wonderland. And the Art Drilling the Magic Summer Camp was citrus themed. So I used this wedge, like citrus wedge slices and did a wedge dress princess lesson. We did different princesses based on the different citruses. So I think green was lime and we did Tiana and then yellow was lemon and that was bell. Orange, who was orange? I think I did a pink that was maybe grapefruit that was Sleeping Beauty. Not quite sure. Anyway, it was a cute idea, I loved it. Sometimes I just love some of the lessons I've taught and I feel like I wanna do them again, but once you've taught them once, it's like, oh, well, I, you can go watch the video. <laughs> I'll just do them for myself. I mean, maybe, I don't know, I could revisit them and find a new way to zhuzh up a bit, I guess. This was those more of those Alexander Gerard dolls from Playtest 2, and then a stamp. I used the stamp from my The Gorl set and did a dress inspired by that. Here is more of that washi tape too. Uh, Disneyland, 68th birthday cavalcade. That was the first time Steve and I had ever been in a Disney show offering together. I couldn't really see him. He was back here in the fire car and I was up the front uh, behind the banner. So when the parade was stopped, I could kind of look down the route and see him. But we weren't really that close to each other. Still, we were in the same cavalcade, so it counts. <laughs> uh, but that was the 68th birthday. I love doing the little special events at Disneyland. It feels very special. Because it's a special event. Anytime you see this kind of green coloured number in my journal, it's uh, Knott's Berry Farm. Because my audition stickers that I get, the number stickers, I usually keep them and put them in here. So there's tons in here, but... Uh, knots changed to doing this plastic green thing that you would clip on, which is a much better way to do it because the stickers always come off and you always have to, you know, safety pin them on. But it means I don't get to have the piece of ephemera for my journal, so I would draw one in there. That was for a Knott's Merry Farm. There was more of our virtual voyage portraits. We saw Tarzan. Another 68th birthday cavalcade photo. That was uh, the cast of the dancers in that. These are zebra mild liners. I need to do more of these, like, they're not themed. I don't know what you call them, but there's there's certain, like, something that happens on the left-hand page, and then I add to it year after year, so it develops its own aesthetic. Uh, I think in my new five year, I think the only thing I've done is make a rainbow set of pages, so I need to be a bit more on that, because if you don't do it up, if you don't set it up in the first year, it doesn't really happen, right? Like, I can't go anywhere. If all of them are just black writing up here, then there's nothing to to add on to the next year. So I'll put a little note in my brain to get that going. This is a photo shoot uh, of one of Steve's friends. He's a an influencer. So Steve works with him and his influencing. Some washi tape, more zebra mild liners. Virtual Voyage 7. Always a little upset that that was so short, but I can't go back and change it now. <laughs> I think there was still a lot in there. It just happened so quickly. It was over so quickly. I, I wish it would have lasted longer. Another blue page. I put uh, my orientation day picture in here for Knott's Berry Farm. I can't believe I haven't even worked there a year. I feel like I've done a billion things at Knott's Berry Farm, but it hasn't even been a full year yet. That's crazy. I did Goring 20s, It's Your Life, Charlie Brown, Preserved, the New Year's gig. We've done four different things there. It hasn't even been a year. That's very fun. I love that. <laughs> More of that. <laughs> Some gouache with this piece from Collage Club. Zumba stars. I have so, so, so many green stars. Now I'm working on adding more blue walkie stars to my planner. I do like the blue stars too. I haven't been on a walk. I've been on like one walk in ages. I've got my planner here. I'll show you. The, the stars have completely changed. Look, one walk, and I did weights that day too. Must have just been like one day I really felt like I needed to do something. These are all red dance stars, which to be fair, if I had to have any if I had, to have any health effort stars in here, I want them to be red. And look how many red stars there are. But they used to be all green and blue. So, 
that's fun. This was uh, an old Wizarding Artist Society thing. There was cute little workshop drawings. Family FaceTime call. It is so rare that you get all of us on the call at the same time, so I take a little screenshot every now and again. This was uh, for the first virtual voyage as well, but I wanted the SNL bumper photos. You know how if you watch SNL, they have the celebrities on, they make those specific photo sets that just all look like this. I challenged Steve to do that just to see if he could learn how to do that. And he did a good job. And then we get to July 26th. I help Steve with his photography a lot. And when he's testing out lighting, I'll usually jump in there so he can see it on the face. But uh, if I'm wearing something nice, it turns into a cute little photo for me. Usually I don't look nice, so <laughs> I don't care about the photos, but sometimes I'll ask him to have one. So this was my little light test photo. On the 26th, I would go back and revisit the year that was, like the age that I've just, that I'm leaving. So in 2019, I had been 28 for that whole year. And so as I was turning 29, because this is my birthday here, um, I would just reflect on what it was to be 28. And then 28 was one of my most difficult years of my life. And then down here, 32 was probably the best age I've had the pleasure of documenting in this journal. So this is really interesting to get a perspective on all of that. It's a very small space, so, uh, you know, it's, it's not a lot. But I try to distill down just the general vibe of how I felt throughout that age. Well, 30 happened, what can I say? It was a lot of pandemic. <laughs> a possible end to it, not really. Yeah, interesting. 31, a new life chapter begins. Yeah, I love reading back on all that. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by my own thoughts about my age. Uh, then I have the photos. We've been doing this photo tradition. It started when I was 30. Uh... Steve did this picture of me, so I put a 29 in there just to have, you know, the full set of ages, but this was my 29th birthday, it was at Disneyland, and then this was my 30th, we were in quarantine, Steve did this double exposure of me when I was a little boy dressed as Dorothy, and then this was a blue gingham shirt too, but it's black and white, you can't see, so just me as Dorothy. This we went into the studio and did a little photo shoot, just a couple of portraits. I had long hair at the time, I didn't really love it. I think it's funny that, like, that hair grew out in the space between here and here, and it's the only one that I have long hair in, <laughs> even though I felt like I had long hair for years. Uh, it really only happened between then. That, uh, I brought all my gelatoni stuff in and did that stupid photo for no reason. 32, I did a bit more of a full photo shoot, which was fine, very simple, a little bit Gucci over here. And then 33, we went out to the park and we did a whole fun editorial. I really liked that one, 33. Can't imagine what I'm going to do this year. I should get my thoughts in order because it's almost coming up to my 34th. Uh, these are extras from those, from those 32, 33. Just for fun. I've been doing them for Steve as well. Uh, we'll set it up and do a little photo. Oh, my sister's birthday. I still remember Elijah running around the house. He had stolen the phone from my sister and we're on Facebook Messenger, uh, like on the video call, and uh, was running around the house like crazy, screaming. It was so funny. That's my sister. She's pregnant with Sophia, who just had her first birthday. There's another washi tape sample. This is Disneyland. Uh, some drawings. This is a part of the Pixar in real life postcards that I did for Virtual Voyage 4. I loved this one. It's a little Vespa. Steve has this uh, Vespa figure. It's not a figurine. It's like a little piece of home decor. So I put Luca and Alberto on there. This was the Mario and Luigi portrait for one of our workshops. Those I have from... Uh, Collage Club, that whole list of prompts of things to do with random negative space in your journals. I've used a couple in here. This was the Minute, Minute Mermaid, and this was me as the green Zumba star. If you don't know what I mean by the Zumba stars, I just put stars for, in different colors to track health effort. They're called health effort stars, and they're not supposed to track like anything in particular. It's just if you've made an, eff an effort to be a bit healthier, 
and whatever the category is. Pink is weights, which I rarely ever do. Uh, blue was walking. It had to be at least 30 minutes of walking. Uh, green was Zumba, which was just a Zumba class, which about 45 minutes. And then dancing was red, again, at least half an hour. But most of those were shows. So, yeah, those were the, the colors. I don't think I have any other color because those are the only really he real health efforts I make. And I tried not to make any of them about food. They had to be like kind of physical efforts that I would make. So it's been great. It's been a really great thing to track because I, I started to go really competitive with myself and I wanted more stars. So I'd have to go and do more things. <laughs> but now that I've got red stars everywhere, I, I feel a little complacent about them. Sometimes I, I do feel a little guilty I don't do my walks because that's a really easy thing for me to do. And it is nice outside and I should do that, but I always look, I look at my work and I'm like, oh, I got to do that. I got to do this. Got to get that. Got to get on the computer. Got to do this. Got to renew my business license. Got to do my taxes. Got to do this. It's just so much. And then I want to walk to avoid it all, but then I don't. I stay at home, but then I avoid it a different way. So then I feel guilty that I didn't do the walk, but I avoided it. I was procrastinating anyway. So I, I couldn't even procrastinate healthily. <laughs> is that stressing you out? We won't talk about it anymore. This is Virtual Voyage 8. That's our most recent one. Currently working on Virtual Voyage 9. This was a return to Burtonville. So we did another Tim Burton-inspired voyage. Love all of that. There's lots of uh, illustrations from things in this journal because it was last year. So it was the last year of my five-year journal. So I was using that to fill up a lot of space. It's just kind of interesting because August to me does feel like the start of Halloween. It feels like the end of summer, start of Halloween. Weather-wise, that's not true at all. But Halloween stuff does become a little bit more around in August, uh, even though it's not until October. So this is when I feel like my journal turns to Halloween. And then I feel like my journal turns to Christmas in October, which it doesn't because there's more Halloween in here. <laughs> I just, I, it's I'm living in America because Halloween's a real thing. In Australia, it'd be Christmas from September onwards. So I feel like the journal's not a great reflection of that, how I really feel inside these hilarious photos my sister sends me. Savannah is always dressed up, like always dressed up like crazy. And this was an old picture of my cabin on the Disney Fantasy. This is where I used to, this, this was the whole living space in my cruise ship cabin. You can see how tiny it was, but I loved it. This is all I had to keep clean in my whole life. Could you imagine? I don't even know why I put that in there. Maybe it was just something I was dreaming about. Is a fond memory that I have all of the time. This is a lot of uh, personal stuff I probably won't go into, but um, we'll just leave it at that. I don't really want to speak too heavily on that because it gets a little sensitive. So just move forward. Um, these were the Red Triangle Circus Gang photos from the workshop. Catwoman. A lot of this is Virtual Voyage 8. Very Tim burton -esque. This is one of the lessons that we did. This was about fears. And we drew our fears. Mine was space, financial insecurity, something happening to my foot again, death and spiders. Don't want to talk about that either. <laughs> Goodness, my journal has taken a very deep turn. It's kind of hard. I mean, look, there's real life happens in here and some things just aren't that good. And it's a little hard to look at them sometimes, especially when you're feeling good. You don't really want to go and, you know, change your mood, but I'm glad I have it all in here. I think it's important that I have it all in here. There isn't anything too crazy in here. I do have a separate journal for that. But if, if I do go back and read through things, I do, there are context clues. And then there are also some uh, phrases or there's some different coding that I use to remember what I'm actually referring to. And that was just something I started years ago because I knew I'd put it on the internet and I didn't want people to be able to you know, pry into anything that was too deep and dark and secret. But for the most part, it's all very general information and positively focused. But some things are just kind of sad things that happen. So it's five years is a long span of time too, like people passing away. I mean, I don't know. I'm still at that age where I just don't have a ton of experience with death and where... I haven't had many people pass away and I feel like, I don't know if it's a, an age thing, but I, I seem to think that as you get older, your the list of people you know that have passed away kind of grows and maybe that's when I come into a deeper understanding of it all. But 
still feels very relatively new to me. Like my grandfather passed away last year as well. He's in here. There's something really commemorative about, you know, keeping those memories safe and documented in here. But yeah, it's, it's a hard thing for me to think about. So the Starbucks people put stickers on my coffee sometimes. I keep those. What was that for? Did I do an audition? Oh, I did an audition. Yep. Knew it. There's only one reason I ever wear that black collared shirt and it's to go to an audition. I had a good time at that one. More workshop lessons. Olivia Newton-John passed away as well. Goodness. I think I documented the queen passed away in here too. The queen? The queen mother. The queen? Both? Maybe both. Goodness. Uh, Wednesday Adams. Oh, that's funny. I went back to dancing with a new body. I went back to auditioning with new eyes. I do believe I remember what that was about. And, uh, yeah, that's funny. Not funny, but whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. The story is way too long. It doesn't, it's not even relevant to people, so it's fine. Look at Savannah. Lige Lou. Old art, art snack stuff. Another one of my mermaid corner pieces stamps. They're so little. I love it. Meltdown. Meltdown part two, the remix. So that's something that I obviously don't want to talk about. So I just write it down like that. <laughs> and I know something terrible happened. Thankfully, I actually don't really remember what this one was about. I'm sure I could guess. But if I wanted to cross-reference the other journal to see what it was about, <laughs> I could. <laughs> The internet is down. Sometimes I wonder what happens if the internet, or not even the internet goes away. I feel like that wouldn't go away. I mean, crazy if it would, right? But the uh, the clouds, all the clouds that hold all the data, what happens when they go away? Like, what if YouTube is like, nah, I'm over it. I'm not going to do YouTube anymore. Where does all the videos go? Just gone forever. Just gone. I mean, I have my little hard drives, but I mean, I always imagine too, you know, it says save it to the cloud. I always imagine it to cloud. I know it's not, it's like an actual physical space. It has to be stored somewhere. But then you start thinking about Wi-Fi. Like how does the internet get into my phone? Like signals and it's, signals are sending so much information. You can see my hands doing this. Like the, like I, the computer doesn't know I'm gonna do this right now. And it relays that information like immediately into what ones and zeros. I'm supposed to believe all that. I can't, I can't talk. I, if I start talking about it, I have existential crisis and I won't be able to go on. So we just need to move on. This is my little new emo. I love him. I have him dressed up in clothes now. I actually got some, uh, a little outfit for him. The printer broke. Oh, here comes the other one. The printer is double the price for the same model. And then I got a new one. Uh, new printer arrived. It's broken too. <laughs> that was a nightmare. I do remember these. These are kind of funny to see. More workshop stuff. The witches. There was our Nevermore portraits. And the sandworm. That was so funny. Oh, I can remember how angry I was. I wanted to throw it out the window. This is a bit of a collage of different things that happened over different years. Mostly Burtonville stuff though. He's cute. These are uh, Tim Holtz stickers. Those, what are they called? The story, They're like little word stickers. I loved those. I'm, I can be very poetic sometimes when I really feel my emo fantasy. Uh, it's not something that I do very often, but when I get into it, I just really feel the poetry. Like it just really moves me, but it's rare. So I have a little soft spot for it. It seems cringe. Like when I'm not in the mood for poetry, it all seems very cringe. But when I'm in the mood for it, I totally understand it and I love it. <laughs> oh, look at the Pinocchio. I love him. He's one of my favorites. And I love her too. Where's she? I need to get that journal out. I know I haven't finished those journals. I probably spoke to you in a video about it a few months ago and said I was gonna start on them, but they're still in a box. Church, clean house, cafe, me time, turn off. That looks interesting. Here's a little picture of a costume I wore. Peter Pan for VV7. A lot of this is workshop work. I've got to be better about, I mean, I, I guess I don't. I love documenting all that stuff, but sometimes I end up documenting a lot about work, 
like the work that I do or the work that I create or I'll j journal about journaling and sometimes that is just too meta. I need to, uh, and I've been better about this, but focus more on deeper thoughts and feelings that kind of f are fleeting that I might want to revisit in the future because I can always flip through those journals and see that work if I want to see the work. But I also get carried away with how decorative some of the little pieces are, and I just love them. Like the little Tianas in the Mary Blair style, I loved those. Disneyland. Margaret Keane, Big-Eyed Waifs. I love that Tim Burton film. Hurricane. Does anyone remember that? We had a hurricane watch and an earthquake at the same time. So stupid. Um... <laughs> And I said, I wrote here, I can't believe I thought I was paranoid about this and it happened. I haven't let it feed any fear though. I was prepared, used my eye technique and I kept from going, and I kept from going with, oh, I kept on going with life as per usual afterwards. Big day for PTSD. That is hilarious. Um, I, when we were having those hurricane warnings, I was thinking to myself, I just, I, I'm so anxious that it's probably gonna like what if there's a hurricane and all the earth is unsettled and then there's an earthquake and then it literally happened that way uh we didn't have like a huge hurricane or anything but it was definitely very windy and rainy and then an earthquake happened it says here five magnitude five which is not huge but it's enough to feel it i was so angry but also vindicated because i felt like i was paranoid for thinking that and then it happened but then you don't want to start thinking that you've got the intuition for it, because then my brain will always think it's going to happen. <laughs> Oof. If you don't know what's in this picture, uh, Oliver. Can you see his little ear and his little feet? This is him laying on the ground. He loves a paper bag. But I tried to put Oliver in there so people could see, but someone did ask before, why have you got a paper bag in your journal? The cat's in there. I only ever used this silver pen once, I think, because you can barely see it. You have to really angle it. It's such a beautiful silver pen, but it looks empty, that little passage. This took forever, this red pen. It was very cathartic to do all those little patterns in the background. The grid of the background uh, on these pages, like the grid of the page, is always something that I feel like I use when I'm decorating the background. Like I'll either follow it along with lines or stripes, or I'll use it to separate, you know, different patterns and this I was just using the grid to make all these different stripes and squares and etc etc like see here the grid in the background I've used it to put you know a certain amount of stripes in each box to keep it all really relative I do love the grid and it's faint enough to not really notice it a lot but it's enough to be able to see it to utilize it because uh, you can see the grid is over here too but love the grid would not change the grid i'm glad that the five-year journal that i got to replace this is exactly the same as this because there's nothing i would change about it obviously worked for five years and i just want to keep it going that one we did this portrait we did in here in the studio i'm literally sat right here that's where you are right here nothing has really changed all of that really looks the same <laughs> now look here's my bento box notepad i have all these little post-its. It's not really a post-it, it's a notepad because there's no sticky part to it, but I still use mine from my bento box. Savannah. This is all blue. There's a lot of blue pages. This is my Picasso blue period. I'm eating a celery. Love that. Love the Muppets. Create a box. Wow, that feels like a billion years ago. A touch of a day off. Just a little. Look at this outfit on Savannah. So unhinged. Fairy dress, bunny ears, sunglasses, Sailor Moon wand, basket. Probably got one heel on. She always wears one plastic clacky mule. And just one. <laughs> I think I'll get to the end of August and then uh, that'll be great. Here is my trip to Australia. Was that when Siobhan was getting married? She didn't get married last year, did she? No, that was my trip only to Australia because I was with Stella before we did that. Oh, wow. Do you remember when I had the, um, when I had an annual pass to Disney? Haven't needed that for a while. 
Oh yeah, that was my trip home last year. That was so good. I'm so excited to go and see all these photos. <laughs> I love the trips because the photos come up. But whenever I'm going to Sydney, there's always a day that I miss because of the time difference. So I always say I never lived it. And then the other one I live twice. So that happens a few times in this journal. I've lost a few days that the rest of the world has had and experienced, but I've never. Here are more of those uh, virtual voyage washi tapes. Take my Sky Bambi to Disneyland and did some journaling. The doll parts, do you remember that? That was a part of Happy Mail in Playtest Patreon. These were live streams we did in COVID. Here's Lige Lou, my big sign. I turned that sign into part of my journal. Mum was on FaceTime because she couldn't be there. Savannah was swishing her dress, it was so funny. We went straight to my mom's. Love that. It was just the girls. I've gonna, done a whole vlog on this, so I guess I won't talk too much about it, but I just, I love it. I get so taken away with the the trips because I collage them all together. This one, I think I'd had so many things going on that I made extra collages because I knew it was my last year as well. I could use this side of the page. So there's a lot more photos documented from this last trip to Australia than most of the others. Um, but there, There's that evidence. Remember I said Savannah only wears one plastic clacky mule? It's there. Literally just one. And that's that was from Knott's Berry Farm when I went years ago. The first time I went, I think. And uh, now I work there. Oh, Oliver. See? Extra collages, which is great because I did so much. I could make whole books with how many photos I take on trips. In fact, I think I should. Maybe that's what I'll get my mum for Christmas this year. I'm just going to make photo books. <laughs> of my trips. <laughs> She'll love that. That's such a thing you give to your mum, like something that really has nothing to do with her. That's terrible. I should figure out what she really wants. I feel like she's got everything she wants. She's so spoiled. This is a really, this is before I even knew what art journaling was. These were the types of illustrations that I used to draw. <laughs> I did this on cruise ships years ago with my uh, Copic markers. I remember the paper I drawed on for this. I really, really loved it. I love those numbers. I need to print some of those out. I need to print a whole page of twos because I always want to use it for dates. Uh, and I run out of all the twos because of 2020 or 2022, 2023. I didn't even get through to 2023 before all those twos were gone. More collages, page in 10. Oh, I haven't done one of those in a while. Should do that. Workaholic question mark. I could believe it. And this will be the last page I do before I slot my little Marie. Uh, piece in here. We'll get on to September another time. Well, that's good. We did all of July and August. That was us going to the Mermaid Pond. Yeah, that's it. That's all I can say. Let's see if we can read. I am so nervous that tomorrow will be a repeat of the lunch of the launch day Patreon issues. I don't see how it could be, but you never know with Patreon. So better to be prepared for it. It was an issue. Do you remember it auto-signed up all the people that didn't want to be auto-signed up? <laughs> I was right to be upset about it. You know what I've learned from a couple of these passages? That I have some very substantiated paranoia about certain things. Maybe I am clued in. Maybe I do know what's coming into the future. I'm a bit that so raven. Because it seems like I get a little anxious about these things and then they do happen. So I'm right to be anxious. Trust your gut, I guess. Anyway, that's where we're at. We'll do September. I'll show you what's coming up next. We'll start with September the next time I get on here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little flip and full chat. I really want to just go through this and make sure that I've covered everything before I put it away. Uh, well, I'm going to display it, but just because I, I, I just, it deserves it. It's one of the best things I've ever worked on, and I just want to make sure that it, there's no... Nothing that went unexplained and no little thing that I, I couldn't have told you about before I put it away. Because you know me, once it's gone, I just forget about it. So look at that. That looks like a really little candy cane. What is it? It's been from a stamp. Okay, I'm going to go. I'll leave it like that. All right. <laughs> See you later. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.